The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. When Jesus came to the territory of the Gadarenes, two demoniacs who were coming from, their, from the tombs met him. They were so savage that no one could travel by that road. They cried out, What have you to do with us, Son of God? Have you come here to torment us before the appointed time? Some distance away a herd of many swine was feeding. The demons pleaded with him, If you drive us out, send us into the herd of swine. And he said to them, Go then. They came out and entered the swine, and the whole herd rushed down the steep bank into the sea where they drowned. The swine herds ran away, and when they came to the town, they reported everything, including what had happened to the demoniacs. Thereupon the whole town came out to meet Jesus, and when they saw him, they begged him to leave their district. The Gospel of the Lord. It's a remarkable little scene that we have here uh, in the gospel. Um, it's, uh, yeah, I mean, Jesus uh, still right at the center of, uh, of Matthew's narrative, of course, as we should expect. Uh, Jesus is taught with authority. He's, he's, um, he's been on the move uh, curing people with, uh, with various illnesses and, uh, and so on and so forth. In fact, we, you know, we saw, we just got that little bit of an introduction um, in uh, the couple, couple passages ago uh, where we see that Jesus is, is bearing our burdens, right? He's, he's, it's, he's affecting healing, but at a cost to himself. Uh, and, and we see that pattern, of course, uh, all the way to the cross. The, really the pattern of, um, you know, his, his rising and, and, and being willing to suffer uh, to meet the demands of love again, all the way, all the way to the end. And as as we make our way through the gospel, we see uh, kind of the uh, the rising uh, forces of of evil, of of chaos, of death, of destruction. And Jesus is going out um, to to that to there uh, roll back the rule of of sin and death, uh, no matter what uh, what the cost is. And I, th- again, it's another. Um, it's another little uh, snapshot here. We see that there's uh, there's there's more going on, uh, perhaps than uh, than we'd otherwise realize. If we were reading the Gospel of Matthew for the first time, we come to this section. There's um, there's more. I don't know. There's it, it's it, it's it's as though Matthew's story to this point is coming to climax with um, these demons calling out. Jesus as who he is. This is the first time in the Gospel of Matthew we see this, this declaration, right? You're the, you're the Son of God. There's, there's something, um, although, right, there's this, obs- the powers of darkness are, are obscure, there's, there's somehow also this spiritual insight at work here that they, that they have uh, insight that others, that others don't. And perhaps we should see there, of course, these are, these are quite powerful forces, uh, and we shouldn't dwell there too long because, of course, Jesus shows just, just how much more powerful than them he is. Uh, and again, one of the, an, another part of what makes, I think, his command so remarkable is that he says, go then. There's not, there's not like a, a lengthy prayer that he recites. You just command, right? Go then, and, and they go. Um, they're driven out into the, into the swine. I think this. I think this story, uh, perhaps, uh, benefits us uh, most. Uh, and there's, I should say, there's much more to be said, but um, it benefits us to see the the uh, the villagers' reaction, the people of Gadara, to see their reaction when the herdsmen come back in and they go back out to Jesus. They see Jesus, and then they beg him to leave their district. And I think this is this is one of two available options whenever there's an authentic encounter with Christ Jesus. There's, it's, it's one of two options. One is to see that Jesus demands with, with all power and authority in heaven and on earth, that he demands to be the very center of your heart and life, the heart and life of your community, and so on and so forth, all the way out to say, 
the, the, the very center of the world, right? The world is, is supposed to revolve around Jesus. It's that you see that, you see the demand, and you give yourself over to it, and it changes everything in your life, right? Or you see that that's the case with him, and you reject him. There's no, there's no middle ground. There's no middle ground there. It's either Jesus as number one priority, Jesus who has, again, all authority in heaven and on earth, Jesus calling the shots, or not for me, not for me. There's not this kind of weird, I don't know, it's, um, it's, a, it's kind of like an enlightenment era uh, relationship with Jesus. It's kind of pr a private spirituality, or even like a, a, I don't know, there's something else. I think it's like a, beyond that, it's a, perhaps a modern kind of um, finding of comfort. And so Jesus just has to fit in my life, and I'm going to stay comfortable where I am. And he, he's got some contribution to make to my life along those lines. And if he doesn't, I really have no, I really have no need for him. And I don't, I don't really want, I don't need him around. I don't really want him around. This is nonsense according to the scriptural narrative. There is, it's complete nonsense. That's not who Jesus is. He's a, he's a much more powerful figure than that. Controls not only, right, the, he, he, he doesn't have just power over, over disease. He has power, remember the, 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 the disciples coming along the way, and he has power over his disciples' lives. He has power over the elements. He's already stilled the storm, and he has power over even demonic forces. Right? He has all power and authority. He's the, very, he's the very center of the story. And it's ours to conform ourselves to that and find then for ourselves life and life to the full and mission and purpose working within God's church for the salvation of all or to just reject the whole thing out of hand. There's, there's not this, we cannot live in this sense that, you know, we're, go, we're going to have you know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to run my life the way I want to. And, you know, I like Jesus as kind of like icing on the cake and make, or make it look pretty or what. It's, it just doesn't, we know it. We know it doesn't work like that, which is why I have to stop here and keep banging the drum, right? Because we know that it doesn't work like that. But it's too easy for us to fall into our habits. It's too easy to, to settle back into, into comfort and the rest. And we can't. We can't. It doesn't honor Jesus. It doesn't respect who he is to do that. So we have to allow Jesus to be this challenging. I mean, this is, I, you know, I like their reaction, can I say? I like their reaction because at least it's authentic. Like at least they, at least they see who Jesus is and they, they, they're going to own their own reaction to it, right? It's like, okay, like, please leave. Please leave. We can't, we can't deal with this, right? We can't deal with this. And for a million reasons that I'm, uh, some of them I'm sure you can imagine, but we can't, we can't deal with this. We don't want anything to do, we don't want anything to do with you. Please leave. Um, can, can we find that for ourselves? If we, if we find this in our hearts, right, then we have an opportunity to lean in on Jesus and say, okay, like, I know that even though I have opposition to him, even though, like, you know, he, he is, he he is the central figure, and I want to give myself totally to him. I want him to be the very center of my heart and life, and yet I struggle to do that. We need to beg him for the strength that we need to reorient whatever it is that's, say, going in the wrong direction. Right? But, but at least there we realize that he's demanding everything of us. He's already done it in the previous pages. He has, the, he has the power and authority to do it. He's the very center of the story. Are we going to live to that reality, or are we not? And I think as long as, uh, you know, as long as I can take for granted the fact that people showing up for daily mass want Jesus to be the center of their lives, you know, we, we have to come here to, in order to make that reality, uh, make that a reality. We have to be here to give ourselves over to Jesus whole and entire, without reservation, without hesitation. That's how we're made, that's how we're made to, to live. That's who we're made to be. But we struggle to do it. It's fine. Jesus has the power and authority to make it real for us. And here we, and here we beg him, not that he'd leave the district, leave us, you know, leave us alone, leave us so we can have our comfort and pleasure, leave us so that we can play our games. No, we want, we want him to come more deeply into our district, the, the space of our hearts and our lives, our community, and all the rest, and all the way to the world, right? We, we want it desperately. 
We know that that's what we're made for. We know we can't get there except through his intervention. And here he is speaking his, his words of, of authority, his words of truth and power, his words of love. He loves us so. That's why he's on the move. He loves us so, and he wants his love to be the, the foundation, the source, the strength of our entire life. And uh, he's not going to rest. He's not going to rest until he has it. He's not going to rest until he has our whole heart. So we might as well just give it to no, just, you know, so it's, uh, we might as well just give it to him because he's not going to rest until he does it. No, he's, we, we should, right? We need to. We, we, we want to. We know it. And today we, we pledge our allegiance to him again. We give him our whole heart and our whole life, expecting the transformation, wanting the transformation, seeking and being eager for the transformation. My friends, he's going to make it so. It's ours to say yes to him.